Corsham, in Wiltshire. A lovely, quiet town. Nothing unusual here at all. Or is there? The year, 1962. Britain was in the grip of fear. The world's superpowers, Russia and America, were developing nuclear weapons at an alarming rate and were threatening to use them. One hit from an atomic bomb was enough to wipe out a whole city. The government issued leaflets to reassure people and tell them how to survive in a nuclear attack. Make a lean-to of wood resting against an inside wall. Don't forget to leave an easy way into and out of your refuge. But thankfully, the attack never came. Had it happened, the Prime Minister Harold Macmillan and his government would have had somewhere to go, from where they would have rebuilt a devastated Britain, an entire underground city right beneath my feet. For years, the city remained top secret, and even the people who were living directly above this place didn't really know what was going on beneath them. But over the years, as the threat of a nuclear attack went away, the place fell into disrepair. The city was built inside an old limestone quarry, and apparently it's pretty dark down there, so I'll be needing one of these. Bunkers are shelters supposedly safe from nuclear attack. This one is codenamed Burlington and it's the size of 35 football pitches and has over six miles of roads. So getting around on foot down here just isn't an option. Uh, taxi! Steve is station commander and with a small team of maintenance workers they've kept the place going. It's not open to the public but Blue Peter has been given special access so you can see just what it's like. It's like a maze. Do you know your way around the whole thing completely or have you ever been lost? I think it's very easy to get lost so you'll see as we go around signposts like First Avenue left and right. Central Avenue. Look, there's even real roadworks. Luckily, though, there's no traffic lights <laughs> and no speeding fines. <laughs> That's the best bit. Yeah. <laughs> Although nobody ever lived down here, there was everything in the secret city for 2,000 government workers to survive for up to three months. The storm shelves are thick with dust now, but they're lined with everyday essentials. There's so many supplies. It looks like all this lot is office station. We've got rolls and rolls of paper, loads of boxes of staples, ring binders coming out your ear holes. Oh, look, top secret, nice. There's so much stuff here, mad. The secret city had everything that a real town has, including a medical centre fully equipped and ready to go. Here in the hospital, there's even a sluice room. Let me explain. Patients can do their number ones and their number twos in a bedpan from the comfort of their bed. Those then get brought over here on the trolley and emptied in this rather strange looking machine. Thankfully, it's never been used before. The city was also kitted out with a large laundrette and fully working kitchen designed to cope with feeding 2,000 hungry mouths. In the underground city, life was intended to go on as normal. Just to show you the lengths they went to, have a look at this lifty little gadget. It was used to make butter pats to spread on your bread, which were all the rage in the 1960s. There we go, one fresh pat. The idea was that the government would eat, sleep and wash in the bunker. In a typical bedroom, each person would be allocated a chair, a bed and a wardrobe. Pretty basic, really. No TVs or DVDs or video games to while away those long, boring evenings. Blast. I say, I spy with my little eye something beginning with... K. Hmm. Kangaroo? Koala? Kiwi fruit. The country would be controlled from this map room where the Prime Minister would be continually briefed by secret MI5 agents. Hmm, just as I suspected. As well as providing a safe hiding hole for the government, the secret city was the nerve centre from which the rest of the country could be rebuilt. Had there been an attack, rows of women would have beavered away in this enormous telephone exchange, putting through important calls from the underground government to various parts of the country above ground. 
I'm sorry, there seems to be no response from London at all, sir. Yes, all the lines seem to be down. But the very best way of getting messages across to the whole nation would have been from the bunker's very own BBC TV studio. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Do carry on. Gosh, how rude. This is the BBC. We regret to interrupt this programme for an official government broadcast. An enemy missile attack has been launched on Great Britain. The government thought they'd chosen the perfect place for this underground den, but from a design point of view, there were a few hitches. The bunker was designed to be radiation-proof, but housed in a limestone quarry, it wouldn't have exactly been watertight. And before long, rainwater contaminated with radiation would have seeped through the ceiling. And the illnesses this would have caused would ultimately have killed the people hiding down there. Thankfully, the secret city was never used, and now the blankets, the waste paper baskets and the crockery, all those items are being packaged up and sent to countries that really need them. So what does the future hold for this extraordinary city that was never lived in? Apparently, it's still undecided. Well, perhaps it could be turned into an underground roller coaster. Or what about a subterranean aquarium? Or even a super cool indoor go-karting track? In it. <laughs> yeah.